Coolant and cryogel are two of the most important liquid in HBM's mode. When it comes to ramping up your power production using nuclear reactor or even spicier, the DFC reactor. Now with the inclusion of both of these liquids in the RBMK reactor in the form of the RBMK fluid heater, which works by taking in coolant and the RBMK cooler, which works by cryogel, it becomes much more important to automate these things and their production. So here is a simple coolant and cryogel farm which you can make by using thermal expansion and blue ice mod. Now links to both of these mods will be down in the description below and yes this farm can work in survival. So you can get infinite amounts of coolant and cryogel. So without any further ado let's get straight into it and see how to build this farm. Now before setting up the machines with their augments and pipes, let's quickly take a look on how this entire thing is going to work so that you can edit it according to your own needs. Now in this setup, we are going to use 4 basic machines. The first one is the igneous extruder, next up we have the pulverizer, a cyclic assembler and then another pulverizer. The first machine, the igneous extruder is going to combine water and lava and form cobblestone. So this is our infinite cobblestone generator which will then go into the pulverizer. Now the pulverizer will convert the cobblestone into sand and gravel. The main ingredient here is sand. The sand will end up in the cyclic assembler where it will be combined into sandstone. So 4 pieces of sand will be combined into sandstone which will then go into the another pulverizer and this pulverizer will convert the sandstone into sand and nitre. Now nitre is the secondary output of the pulverizer but for us it is the main output as nitre is what we are going to use in order to make our cooler. So the nitre will end up in the second slot and all of the sand that we are going to get from the sandstone we will take it back and basically we will pump it into the cyclic assembler. So it will form a closed loop where sand will form sandstone and the sandstone will then get again get converted into sand and yeah it will be a closed cycle. So this is how the entire thing is going to work. Now let's set up all of the ducts and the augments and see how this thing is yeah going to look. So first things first, we need to get some water and lava inside our igneous extruder. And for that I am going to use a tank. Now I think you can also probably do this by just right clicking the lava bucket and water bucket on the extruder. But just for being safe I am going to use a tank. So there goes the water and here we have the lava. So now we have one bucket of lava and one bucket of water in the extruder and you can see it is already forming some cobblestone. Now we want to stop this process when we want to. So go to the redstone control and set it to high. And as soon as you set it to high and place a lever on one of its side, the machine will stop working and will only produce cobblestone when you flick the lever on. So now our igneous extruder is actually redstone controlled. Let's go to the pulverizer next. Set the left side of the pulverizer to input as we want our cobblestone from the igneous extruder to go into the second pulverizer and connect both of these machines using an item duct. Now once that's done, let's connect the output of the pulverizer into the input of the cyclic assembler. So set the left side of the cyclic assembler to input which is the blue side like this and connect them with another item duct. And by the way, it's good to use the fluctuating item duct as it can also transfer RF. Now for the final pulverizer, take out all of the augments. So yeah, the final pulverizer is not going to have any augments as we want it to run at maximum speed. So once that's done, connect the input of the final pulverizer with the output of the cyclic assembler like this. And set a servo with redstone to ignore. And with this, we have connected all four of our basic machines. Now we want the output or the sand to go into the cyclic assembler. So set the back side of the cyclic assembler to input and then connect the back side of the pulverizer with the back side of the cyclic assembler like this. There we go. Now for the main output which is the nitre, we need to connect the nitre into this crate right here. And nitre output is going to be on the bottom side. Now as we have taken out all of the augments, you cannot really change which side is going to do what in this pulverizer. So yeah, you just have to work with what you got. So connect the bottom side of the pulverizer like this. And with that, all of the nitre will end up in the crate. Now for energy, I am going to use a simple self-charging gold battery. But we will need to upgrade this when all of the machines are running at full power. But for now, gold should do just fine. So now that we have set up all of the pipes, now it's time for a really important step which is going to be the augments. So the igneous extruder is going to take the level 1 
accelerated extrusion augment. What this will do is it will give us 16 cobblestone per operation. Now the pulverizer will take speed upgrades. So if you want to pause the video right now, you can pause it and just take a good look at the names of all of these upgrades. So the pulverizer, we are going to place three speed upgrades. So this is the level one, then there's the level two, and finally the level three upgrade. This is going to increase the speed of our pulverizer. And finally, we are going to set up the nullification chamber augment. What this is going to do is it will allow the pulverizer to run even when the secondary output is full of gravel. Otherwise, the pulverizer would have just stopped running. Now for the cyclic assembler, we only need to place down three speed upgrades. So place down level one, two and three of the speed upgrades like this. And finally, we come to our pulverizer, the final pulverizer. Now for this, the first three upgrades are going to be the secondary sieve upgrades. What they are going to do is increase the secondary charge and our secondary output is going to be nitre. So the more nitre we have, the more coolant we can produce. And for the second upgrades, just place down three levels of speed upgrades. And basically we are done by placing the augments. Now connect the flux ducts or the item ducts in this case with the HE2RF converter. And they will start or basically they will start transferring power into these blocks here. Now also for this pulverizer, place down another item duct. And yeah, that is the benefit of having the item ducts which can also transfer flux. So we don't have to use separate flux ducts. And then extend a cable from the battery storage block into the chemical plant. Now we can start running this entire setup. The igneous extruder will start producing cobblestone 16 at a time, which for some reason are not going into the pulverizer because I have not set up. Uh, okay. So once you set up the inputs properly, the pulverizer will start accepting the cobblestone. They will be converted into sand and this sand will end up in the cyclic assembler. So now let's set up the cyclic assembler using a schematic. Just get an empty schematic and get a block of sand. That is all you need in order to set this up. So place down the empty schematic here and then by placing four sand blocks like this, press the right icon and all of the sand blocks will be converted into sandstone. These sandstone blocks will end up in another pulverizer where they will be converted into nitre which will be stored in this iron crate here and all of the sand will come out on the back side and will again end up in the cyclic assembler where it will be converted into even more sandstone. So as long as we have this lever flicked on, this entire setup will keep on running and it will keep on producing nitre. So now setting up the chemical plant is actually self-explanatory. Just place down a speed tree and a power saving upgrade and place some water the chemical plant will automatically start or it will start producing coolant from the crate that we have placed next to it. So here I'm going to set up a big gas tank in order to store all of the coolant that we are going to produce. So this basically was your infinite coolant plant. This setup will give you more coolant than you will know what to do with. So yeah, that's that. And as you can see, in just a little time, we have produce so much uh, nitre. So that's that. Now that we are done with infinite coolant, let's switch to the next step, which is infinite cryogel production. And for this, we are going to need the industrial solidification machine. How this is going to work is that we have blue ice mod installed. What that mod does is that you can combine nine pieces of ice into packed ice. Now this crafting recipe is not available for 1.7.10. So yeah, using this mod, we can actually have this recipe. Place down nine industrial solidification machines like this. And in each of the machine, place down a speed tree and a power saving tree upgrade. And also set it to water so that it can convert the water into ice. Now this is to be done with all nine of the machines. So I'm just going to speed up the entire footage. And also while you are at it, place down a water tank and place down a heavy infinite storage uh, or a heavy water barrel in it so that while we are doing this, it can fill up with water as we are going to need a lot of water to power all of the sol solidifiers. So that's the last one. And with this, all of the solidification machines are now set up. Now let's connect them all using cables on the top. And these cables are to be connected 
to the main power line that we set up earlier for the infinite coolant production. So bring out all the cables like this and they should actually line up pretty perfectly. And let's just do that with all of the other cables as well. Now the reason that we need to produce coolant before cryogel is in order to produce cryogel, you need coolant in the first place. So that's why it's important to make the coolant farm first and then you can make the cryogel plant. Now that all of the solidifiers have power in them, place down a cyclic assembler in or basically one block in front of it and set the back side of the cyclic assembler to input. Now we are going to connect all of the all of the solidifiers that is with item ducts. So connect them all in a straight line like this. And then we are going to take all of the item ducts and set them with servos. And on the servo, set the redstone to ignore so that they can automatically take out any ice that is basically formed inside the solidifier. So this is our auto ice output and all of the ice will end up in the cyclic assembler using these item ducts. There we go. Now that this is done, let's also set up the water pipes. So now that the tank is full of water, simply connect the other remaining side of the solidif solidifier with water ducts like this. There we go. Now, as soon as I set the water tank to output, one by one, all of the solidifiers will start filling up with water and they will start producing ice. And all of this ice will end up in the cyclic assembler. So there we go, we are producing ice. And all that ice is coming in and gathering in the cyclic assembler. So now let's set the cyclic assembler up. The process is the same, place down an empty schematic and place down 9 blocks of ice which will give us one packed ice. Simply click on the right button, don't forget this and with this a cyclic assembler is all set up. Place down an HE2RF converter on top of it and connect it to the main grid and with this the cyclic assembler will start making packed ice out of all of the ice blocks that we are providing it. Now the shredder can take its input from the top side and output from the bottom side so connect an item duct from the output of the cyclic assembler going into the top of the shredder and with this the shredder will start accepting all of the packed dice. Now the shredder will basically shred the packed dice into cryo powder and this cryo powder can be used to make cryogen. I am going to use dash blades cause they don't lose their durability so we don't need to worry about that. Simply connect the shredder with a power line like this and with this the shredder will start running and start producing some cryo power. Now come out by one or two blocks so that there is ample space in between. The cryo powder will end up in the crate. The crate is connected to a chemical plant which then again will be set up to make cryogel. So for cryogel just connect the chemical plant with some power and also you will need to connect it with coolant because cryogel is made with coolant and cryo powder and as soon as we start getting some coolant in here we'll start producing cryogel simply set up another tank to store all of this cryogel as right now it's not too much but once the other tank the coolant tank is full you are going to get a lot of cryogel in here so there we go and with this a cryogel farm is also set up now one last thing is that the gold battery is really struggling to keep up so you either need to use the lead battery or the americium so the self-charging battery i'm just going to upgrade from gold to a self-charging lead battery and that should do the trick hopefully and there we go even though we are getting some dips in power it is filling up so that was all I had for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out guys.